Hey everyone, Casey here. Uh, we're back with a new video today. Uh, today is a particularly special video because uh, we're going to be making some do-it-yourself uh, Arduino stuff. Uh, so over the summer I, I was interested a lot in uh, human interface device attacks. Um, you know, if you've watched Mr. Robot, uh, a, a common famous example is the rubber ducky USB by Hack5. Uh, well, also over the summer, I attended DEF CON where I loaded up on Hack5 merch, and that was awesome. Uh, I have a Bash Bunny that I've played around with, and uh, the Bash Bunny is kind of like the end-all be-all. It's a rubber ducky USB on steroids, and I absolutely love it. But I wanted, I wanted to see how simple it would be to make my own uh, rubber ducky USB. Uh, it turns out it's pretty easy and cheap. It's a lot cheaper than Hack5 sells them too, although they're not quite as sophisticated as the Bash Bunny. Uh, so I watched some tutorials from um, a couple different YouTube channels on how to do this with an Arduino Pro Micro um, and some OTD, OTG USB adapters. Uh, but the when I tried it the first time, uh, things went a little bit wrong. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that uh, in a minute. But uh, before you start this tutorial, let me tell you what you're going to need. You're going to need a handy dandy soldering iron. Uh, I have mine uh, right right here. Uh, and then you're going to need some solder. Uh, I would recommend some uh, some lead free solder. Uh, one of these things is like, um, I don't know, like not even $5 and it's more than enough solder to last you for most projects. Um, I'm not, I've, I've only recently learned to solder and I'm not actually all that good. Uh, but that just kind of tells you more to how easy this project is. It's really easy to, to build do-it-yourself bad USB. So you need a nice nice little soldering iron, uh, some lead-free solder, and uh, you're going to need some uh, wire cutters of some sort or some equivalent. Uh, and then, of course, you need the actual parts. So uh, right here we have um, a button, and this button uh, is really cheap. They actually come in a pack of a ton of buttons. <laughs> you get you get a whole lot of buttons for a whole lot of nothing. Um, I ordered these off of at the Adafruit website, and I'll try to, to to remember where I bought everything from and link that in the description. But got that, um, and then I got this is an Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, it's obviously not the um, Arduino brand, of course. Uh, the Arduino brand, I think, actually might be called something else. But this particular Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It was it's pretty cheap, and uh, I found it on Amazon. Um, uh, this whole project didn't cost me more than like fifteen dollars. Uh, of course, I've spent a little more because I bought a few more Arduino Pro Micros. But all in all, it's uh, when you do the math, it's about six dollars per bad USB. And then lastly, you're gonna need uh, a micro USB cable. The shorter, the better. Uh, these are the shortest ones I could find, uh, but uh, they also came in a big pack with a whole lot of them. Okay, so now before we get started, I'm going to show you my original two attempts. Uh, first was this one. This one uh, looks a lot uh, nicer and kind of neater. It's smaller. Um, basically, uh, this was based on the original tutorial videos that I was following. Uh, and here we have a, an OTG adapter uh, and the, the button that we've soldered in. And the idea here is that... Um, this small adapter is, is adds a form factor to where we could pretty much put a case of any kind around this and it'd be just like a bad USB. It's, it's a really nice form factor, really small, um, and it seems like it would work great. But there's a pro couple problems with these OTG adapters uh, that the tutorial video that I originally watched didn't tell me. Uh, the first is that uh, if you do not put electrical tape, see how I have some electrical tape here? If you do not put electrical tape on it, uh, it will short. Uh, as soon as you plug it into a USB port. Uh, the other problem is most of these adapters, I don't know if it's all of them, but every single adapter I've bought uh, actually um, does not work unless you plug it into a USB port that also transfers power. Those USB ports are normally yellow. If you've ever used like a Lenovo ThinkPad, there's usually like a yellow port on the back of the ThinkPad that uh, you could actually use to charge devices uh, other than your Lenovo and or yeah other than your laptop and you uh if you plug this into that port it works great because not only can it do data transfer but it also supplies the arduino pro micro with power however you, if you apply if you plug it into any other standard usb port it will either a short out if you don't have electrical tape or b do absolutely nothing because the arduino is not getting any power 
So that's where I came up with this. So this is kind of my modification. Uh, it's kind of ugly, <laughs> but um, it works. And so you would actually have to, to do a little bit more with this to get it to be pretty. I would reckon, like I said, the shorter the USB cable, the better. This is what our end product's kind of gonna gonna kind of be like today. Uh, the point here is more of a proof of concept than uh, anything else because uh, as I was learning how to do this, the proof of concept was kind of lacking. Uh, they seemed to work really well at the end of the tutorial, uh, but I never saw a direct transition into everything working. There, there was one video series that used the, uh, the there was one video series that used the, um, the OTG adapters. Um, and I think it was the original one, the first guy who ever kind of made these. Uh, I can't remember his YouTube channel for the, for the life of me, but uh, they originally used these. And at the end of the video, their demonstration worked out real well and everything looked great. Uh, I did not receive the same results. So uh, I tried plugging in just a normal micro USB cable and bam, it worked. So it, it was definitely the culprit was the, the little tiny adapter. So we're sacrificing some form factor, uh, but since we know what the issue is, uh, simply splicing uh, one of these USB cables and making it shorter, or uh, maybe um, building a USB case to fit this kind of form factor, uh, whatever you want to do, the the you have endless possibilities when it comes to that as far as customization goes. But we just want to get it working. So that's the point of this tutorial today, is just to kind of get this working. Um, so what, what we're building here today is actually a rubber ducky USB. This is a do-it-yourself rubber ducky USB. Uh, it's going to be able to run the same uh, ducky scripts that the Hack5 rubber ducky USB can run. And it's going to do that with the, the Duckino project. Um, I don't know if the Duckino project is actually um, supported anymore, but there's a cool tool I made adapted off of whatever the latest version on their uh, GitHub repo was. Uh, where I've turned this into an, a cross-platform Electron app so you can actually just run this natively on your desktop rather than having to visit uh, a website or, or just run it off of a HTML file. So it makes it a little bit more native feeling, but it really doesn't change any of the functionality. Uh, but shout out to the Duckino project. Those guys did a, a pretty cool job and they, they make the code execution part of this uh, possible in the first place. So um, yeah, so we're going to go from start to finish. We're going to solder our, our button onto our board. I'm going to explain uh, why we have the button in the first place. And uh, once we're done soldering our button, uh, we're going to actually program our uh, Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start here with our Pro Micro. Uh, so this is uh, the Arduino Pro Micro. It is a... Um, just a small Arduino board uh, that has uh, some human interface device capabilities, which is why uh, it's our board of choice. So this can emulate a keyboard, this can emulate a mouse, etc., uh, in order to perform common human interface device attacks, which is why this works so great, and plus it's in the form factor already of a tiny USB. Um, so it kind of works perfectly for all of our, our, our purposes. So. Uh, what there, there's a couple problems here though that we're going to go ahead and, and address since we have the foreknowledge. Um, so the first problem is that the Arduino Pro, Pro Micro doesn't have a lot of memory storage. Where you might be able to store multiple optional payloads on a rubber ducky USB, or if you have a Bash Money, it has a, a even a payload selector. Uh, you can't do that here. There, the the same tutorials that kind of led me to doing my own research and my own project on this, uh, ha actually made a couple more cool tutorials where they had like a, um, a dip switch where you could have like uh, some something like 24 different payloads or whatever uh, that actually made it more appealing than the Bash Bunny and they had like this cool uh, on the fly transpiler SD card that used the same Duckino project uh, to transpile the code and you could have multiple payloads and it was really cool. But it's kind of... It was kind of overly complicated for me. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a newbie for soldering and I'm a newbie in understanding hardware electronics. This was kind of my, my intro project into all of this. And so this is to show that, that you can still achieve this even, even with, some, with minimal knowledge. So um, the good thing though is that uh, these are pretty cheap and disposable. So if you're using this on like a pen test or whatever and you don't want to 
waste your rubber ducky USB or your bash bunny that you just spent like $60 on or whatever, however much it costs now, <laughs> and you're worried about losing that as part of your pen test, what you can do is you can make a couple of these, uh, shove them into a computer and you can leave them behind. Uh, these are completely disposable because of how cheap they are, uh, but we don't want to just waste uh, a perfectly good Arduino board, so we do need to make them reusable. So there's a there's a problem when you when you first load code onto this thing and treat it as a human interface device. Uh, what'll happen when you plug it into a computer and run your uh, your code, especially if your code's malicious, um, is it will always run every time. So what happens when we want to reprogram it? Well, as soon as you plug it into your computer, you're going to unleash whatever uh, malicious code uh, that was written there onto yourself. So that's where this, uh, this teeny tiny button comes into place. Uh, what we're going to do is add, solder this button onto our Arduino. And by doing that, we will basically make a kill switch. And so at the beginning of our code, as long as the button is pressed when we insert it into the computer, uh, there will be a endless loop that executes rather than our malicious code. Um, and this will allow us to reprogram our, uh, our Arduino uh, and reuse it multiple times. Uh, so that's really nice, so we can't actually reuse this. But, uh, so, so in the event that you do get your, your uh, do-it-yourself bad USB back from your pen test, uh, you'll be able to, to use it again on, on, a, on another adventure. So uh, that is kind of the hypothetical scenario for where I find this useful. Uh, I very much look forward uh, into getting into a career in offensive security of some sort. So it'd be cool just to have these tools in my tool belt already, uh, just for fun, you know. And 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 you know, it's just a fun project. Like, the this was a great entry level soldering project. Uh, it kind of gets you familiar with some hardware concepts, uh, um, and it was a really easy introduction how to program microcontrollers for like the Arduino product stuff. Uh, and it's actually a whole lot easier than you would think. It was very intimidating to me at first. So this is a great project for that. So that's why we need our button. It's basically a kill switch that says don't run the bad code. Uh, but past that, that's really the only thing we're soldering. That's really the only hardware intensive part of this. Uh, the rest, as you saw with our, our previous USB, is uh, some electrical tape and uh, wrapping the USB cable around a couple times. So let's get into it. First off, we're going to uh, look at our button. So this button has uh, four tiny little prongs on it. Um, and uh, we're actually going to need to level out two of these prongs to uh, make it kind of even with our board. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna take my, my wire cutters and I'm going to kind of level them off. But first, I'm going to bend them outwards like so. So we're gonna, gonna kinda bend them out there. And uh, once they're bent out, we can cut them a lot easier. So cut them as close as you can, but you know, don't break your button. Uh, if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, and that's okay. Uh, I actually got, did a, did a okay job here. Um, they could be, Shorter, bending them back is really the hard part because uh, the stubs are so tiny you don't want to cut yourself. So now we've got kind of our, our stubs cut um, and uh, we will begin soldering into the board. So where we're going to solder is very important. Uh, we're going to solder one pin into the ground pin and one into pin three. So uh, why why are we doing that? Well, you see the the ground pin, of course, you want to ground uh, anything you solder is, is good to have your ground. But pin three is what's really important here, and so it, you want to have a ground pin uh, for for your button when you're soldering. That way, it's grounded, um, and the closest pin that we can actually loop into uh, that is near the nearest ground pin is actually pin three. We could technically we could probably get away with ground pin and pin two, but I like ground pin and pin three. Uh, that's just what I'm, uh, I just like the placement of that uh, more than anything else. Uh, but you could also do a ground, the first ground pin and pin two. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Um, I'm actually going to trim off a little bit of my button here. Um, 
just tiny tiny bit of the uh, normal of the legs we have left I'm gonna trim those off I don't want to do too much it doesn't have to be flush with the board but the the nicer we can make it of course would be super all right guys so now we're gonna actually get into soldering um, like I said I'm not an expert solder so if you have any criticisms or critiques uh, feel free to leave them in the comment comments below uh, but hopefully I'm good enough to get the job done I have I've done this at least two times before uh, so and so far everything nothing's burned down yet all right so uh, heat your soldering iron to around I want to say a little over 350 degrees uh, you probably can get away with less than that uh, you can get away with more but you want to be somewhere in between uh, just enough to melt the solder but try not to overheat uh, your board um, I don't really like I said I'm not an expert this is just uh, an arbitrary temperature at which the that was low enough to where my solder started to melt but not too high right so we're gonna prime our uh, prime our uh, soldering iron tip here and the way we do that is just by touching our solder and melt a little bit of solder off and we got a little sponge off to the side where I kind of wipe that off on so that's going to be the start of our journey here so I'm going to place my soldering iron back in its rack you can't see that because it's kind of off to the side here uh, but I'm going to bend my pins back down on my button because I forgot to do that and I'm going to go ahead and begin the placement for my uh, button it's going to go in ground and pin 3 You have to bend them a little bit just to fit them through, but that's what it's going to kind of look like. So it's going to look like on the back. It's almost flush. It's nice. Um, but yeah, we don't want we don't want to. I had them sticking through the holes. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I had them sticking through the holes. Uh, but we don't want them sticking all the way through. That was just to make sure they would fit. Uh, when we're actually soldering them in, uh, we want to uh, have them just hovering above the holes we're going to solder in. And let the solder do the connection, not actually loop them all the way through. Right, so... Um, Alright, so uh, just a, a, a couple key points to note. Um, we are actually placing the button on the back side of the board. You don't want to solder it on top of the board. We want it on the back side of the board. Uh, you could get away with putting it on top of the board. Uh, don't recommend that because you're just going to get in way, in way of all the capacitors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so put it on the back of the board uh, and go on from there. All right, so there, there's a little bit of danger in doing this without a breadboard. Now, there's not like any physical danger, but if you test this button here without a breadboard uh, and you don't program it first and you're not sure how it works, uh, you can just solder it in a button and the button doesn't work. However, it's not the end of the world. You can actually desolder the button very, very easily and uh, try again. So that's why I don't really worry about that. Um, it's just so cheap and simple to do that it's not even worth it. So we're going to uh, take our solder we have here and we're going to stick it right on top of uh, the ground pin and apply it gently all right so I actually had a little mishap there with my uh, initial solder but with my, my handy dandy plunger uh, I actually got everything fixed up and I actually got two nice nice little beaded solder there. Um, and so our ground pin is now successfully soldered. Uh, now we're going to go for our uh, 
pin three. We're gonna do kind of a similar thing uh, right here, but um, we're going to be a little bit more gentle this time. Just stick it in. And kind of let it do its own thing. So we have our two little beads soldered in. All right, cool. So not too shabby for, for an amateur like myself. Um, all right, so like I said, this wasn't really a soldering tutorial. This was just kind of, it was just to kind of show you uh, how you should go about doing it. Um, so I've got my button kind of soldered on there. Uh, could have done a better job. All, all in all, not too bad. Uh, I'm sure it's actually going to work perfectly fine. Uh, it seems to be soldered in very well, uh, despite the, the somewhat shoddy job. So yeah, uh, with that, we're, we're soldered and ready to go. That was it. That's the soldering part. It's really not that bad. See, uh, just solder in two little, little pins and we're good to go. So all you got to do now is plug in your handy dandy micro USB cable and you're ready to program this bad boy. So uh, like I said, there's there's not much to this. I'm not actually going to go show you, go through the process of showing you that I plugged it into my computer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just take your US, micro USB cable, you have it plugged in like this. We'll wrap it up later once we know that's worked. Uh, but plug it in like this, like you would, and we're going to hand head on over to the computer where we'll continue this tutorial. All right, hey everyone, we're back in kind of my domain, uh, so I kind of know what I'm doing now. Uh, so before we get started, we're going to um, download a couple tools we need. The first is going to be the Arduino IDE here. I already have some base code set up. It's going to be a template. I'm going to explain this later. In fact, we're probably going to modify this and not use this. But you're going to need the Arduino IDE. It's available on Linux, Mac, and, uh, and uh, Windows. Um, if you have a popular Linux distribution like Ubuntu or Debian or something, I think this might actually be built into the repos if you just want to have to install. Uh, but otherwise, you can go download their packages. Uh, just Google Arduino IDE. looks like this. Uh, and you should be good to go. The second thing we're going to need, if you want to mosey on over to the GitHub that's in the description, is Quack. Quack is the uh, Dokino native application that I made. Um, it is just a an Electron app that makes uh, kind of translating this kind of stuff easier because you don't always you don't have to open a web browser or, or anything like that to um, to go about transpiling the DeciScript to uh, Arduino C. Uh, it's it's kind of just more native. It, it really it's just an Electron app, so it's a browser window running an application. That's all it really is at the end of the day. But uh, I find it a lot more useful because it has a native feel, and it's just like opening any other app on my computer. I don't have to go visit somebody's website. I don't have to uh, have this GitHub project on my computer where I go click and open an HTML file. It's just a lot better and nicer and cleaner in my opinion uh, and, I, and I made it for me this isn't really for anybody else I made this for me but it is open source and free to use and it's available on Mac OS Linux and Windows uh, it's built using the original Duckino JS uh, I did not write Duckino JS but I'll probably make some modifications to it as a part of this project because there are a few uh, deprecated things as far as code generation goes that we'll see uh, that I would like to fix but for the most part, this works great. I would highly recommend going ahead and downloading this. And once you've got that, we'll be ready to go. All right, so now we're going to go to Arduino IDE. Uh, if you ordered the board that I'm using, you're going to want to go click Arduino Leonardo. Uh, if you ordered any other board, good luck, have fun, you're on your own. You obviously knew what you were doing and uh, went against the grain. So I trust you to know what you're doing. If you don't know, it's not my problem. So <laughs> good luck. Otherwise, Arduino Leonardo... And you see the ser serial port right here is blank. So I'm going to plug in my Arduino now and go back to tools. It looks like it's seeing my Arduino successfully. My little red light's on. Everything seems good to go. All right, so now we're going to open Quack. Uh, the easiest way to write stuff in uh, for this is going to be with DuckyScript because we're trying to run DuckyScripts. This is a do-it-yourself. Rubber Ducky USB, bad USB, 
you know, whatever. And so Ducky Script has a lot of nice pre-built payloads. It's a really easy language to write. Uh, it's a lot better. It's a lot easier and quicker than doing it just in plain Arduino C. Although once you've kind of translated some of these instructions over time, it actually isn't too bad to write Arduino C as long as, uh, for this as long as you have the templating stuff kind of set up. So we're going to set an initial delay 500. Um, uh, what the delay does, it gives the the uh, the Arduino a second to initialize uh, before it actually does anything. Uh, I'm actually going to set it to 600. I've had a lot more success with 600, but 500 should be plenty to get every, everything initialized. Uh, and then I'm going to say string. Uh, well, no, we'll just do do it like this. So delay of 600 and string. Hey everyone, and we're going to copy this code. And I have this this other code right here. I'm actually just going to copy it underneath it for now. And we're going to look at this. So what we're going to change is we don't need this keyboard.h. The only thing I'm really going to copy from here is this. And then we're going to get rid of all this because I know it's kind of confusing. All right, cool. So this is the, the code that was generated minus the, the keyboard.h import. Uh, we don't need that keyboard.h import because I think the keyboard object's actually built into the namespace now with our Arduino C. Um, so let's break down what's going on here. Uh, we have the type key function. Uh, you can set a delay longer than this if you want the delay typing, but basically what this is is it's going to do a keyboard press based on your keyboard print, uh, and it's defining that. Um, but uh, the important stuff here is we have our keyboard begin, getting our in input stream. This is an arbitrary wait 500 milliseconds, uh, and this is another delay. This is our actual delay. So the wait 500 milliseconds is uh, mostly for the. Uh, it's kind of built into the um, the default, the Kino JS transponder, but the, it's not really enough. But this plus the regular delay of uh, or this plus the delay we added actually works great so just kind of leave both in there but you can really just delete this and you know double this if you want to and that would work just as well but uh, I'm just gonna leave that as it is for simplicity sakes because that's what we generate and we're going for quick and easy all right so now I'm gonna paste in that code from the other uh, template I had so what this is doing is saying if, if we were to run the code we had before Every time we would have plugged it into the computer, that code would have reran. Uh, and if the, this code were malicious and not just a happy little print statement, uh, that could be problematic for us if we just wanted to reprogram it, right? We don't want to put a virus on our own computer. Uh, uh, so uh, this, what this is saying is set pin mode three, input pull up. So pin three, so, uh, so pin mode and Parameter one is three. Three is the pin, remember, that we soldered into. So pin three, ground pin and pin three. Uh, and so we're initializing that. And then we're saying if the digital read on three is low or if the button is pushed in, uh, in, this, in our case because our button is soldered into pin three. So if that, that is pushed, uh, do something. Uh, and in this case, that do something is printing I am the button. And so this is going to help us not only safeguard ourselves in the future but in this case test if our button soldering even worked uh, because if it didn't we are going to need to go back and reassess our situation right so i made nelson's condition here so if, it, if the button's not pressed execute our other code so this is kind of how you would do it uh when you're writing your actual payload here so you would write your payload in ducky script and then you would add this if conditional to that payload and say all right if we're pressing the button execute like either nothing or this arbitrary print statement. You can just have it execute nothing if you want to. And then if, and then else, it, you can execute the normal code that we had. And this is just kind of safeguards it. Um, some people like to go ahead and put this in an infinite loop to just ensure that uh, the other code is never reached. But honestly, an if, an if else conditional is probably more than enough. Um, this is how I like to do it. But if you want to be extra safe, you can say if, uh, if the button is pushed, while true, do nothing, and just have an endless loop going. A lot of people like to do that as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. And so this should be enough. We can now verify our sketch. And so this is going to compile it. Done compiling. Uh, every, no errors. We're good to go. Now we can actually upload this sketch to our Arduino. So I'm going to come down here before I do that. Uh, once I do this, the code actually should execute. And I'm not pressing the button, so we should see, hey, everyone, uh, get typed down here. So I'm going to upload. 
There we go. Hey, everyone. Perfect. And so I'm going to delete this. Oops. And I'm going to unplug my Arduino and plug it back in. It should do it again. Man, super cool. So now we're actually able to execute code like a bad USB would. Uh, so it's emulating our keyboard. That's great. Now we need to test if our button works. So we know our Arduino works and we know our, our Arduino C code's working. We successfully programmed it, but is our button working? So we're going to plug this into our computer while holding the button. So I'm going to hold down the button and then plug this into the USB port. Hi, and the button. Look at that. Our button soldered in successfully. So uh, this allows you to reprogram this because you can avoid your, your payload code uh, and continue uh, reprogramming and reusing your Arduino. So that's kind of all there is to that. Uh, you can kind of uh, rewrap the Arduino cable around however you want or maybe uh, build a cool case for it or get a better USB cable for it so it doesn't look quite as janky as my, my original uh, proof of concept. Uh, but that's that's all there is to it. It's really not that hard, guys. The, the soldering didn't take long at all. Uh, it took maybe like 5-10 minutes. Uh, would it take even less if I was, wasn't was making a video? It probably taking like 2 minutes to do. Uh, and then the, the ducky script is as simple as can be. Uh, you can actually get more payloads. Uh, uh, I included the default Hack5 payload link on the on my version of the Duckino JS, the Quack. If you click this, it'll open another window and uh, direct you to all the Hack5 uh, rubber ducky payloads. Uh, so you can actually try out any of these on your new uh, do-it-yourself bad USB. Uh, they won't all work without some modification, but for the most part, you can just copy and paste and it works great. Uh, keep in mind, some stuff is operating system specific, um, but they're, uh, but everything generally works. If you find something that doesn't work, you may have to, to work out some bugs. But remember, remove the keyboard uh, .h include and um, add an extra delay uh, and make sure you add in your protective measure for your button. That's why we soldered on the button in the first place. Uh, and that's it. Then, then you're good to go. So, um, yeah, this was kind of a deterrent from my normal videos. I've been doing my OSCP journey. Um, but this is a fun little thing that I wanted to make for uh, uh, for something I'm doing related to my schoolwork right now. Uh, so that's why I went ahead and built this kind of like a sidetrack. Uh, just a quick update on the OSCP journey stuff. I'm, uh, I haven't done much since the last video. I've, I've mostly done uh, practice and, and training. Uh, I've done some hack the box stuff and I've done some um, some more uh, tests on VMs, but I, uh, or more practice on VMs I've already done, but I haven't done any new Vulnhub VMs just yet. I haven't had the time. But uh, I am going and taking my Security Plus certification in a couple weeks. I think I'll do pretty good on that. Uh, I've been studying hard just in case, but um, all the practice questions I've, I've seen and I've taken, uh, I've felt pretty confident on, so that, that feels pretty good. So that'll be a, a cool cert to have. I wasn't planning on getting it originally, but... Um, I uh, received a, a free voucher for it, so that was that was super awesome. So I said, you know what, free cert, heck yeah. Uh, so that'll be cool, another thing to add under my belt. Uh, but other than that, in, in that kind of realm of stuff, I've mostly been doing activities like this to prep for more, to prep for more school-related stuff. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I may make more videos like this in the future uh, if I get better at doing hardware-related stuff, uh, but we'll see if that ever comes to fruition or not. But hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something and hopefully this is useful to you. So uh, thanks for watching.